probably somebody upstairs still. These guys just don't like to die. I feel like I should grab this. Anybody else in here? Oh, got him. Murder me. For shoot Menendez, face capture. We're going to shoot him. Shooting him, but because I didn't do these strike mission stuff, um, shooting him will give us a better ending, I think. Not the best ending, but it'll be better to uh, just kill him rather than keep him alive. Still not a great ending, but you know. think things would turn out a little bit worse if we capture him so whatever plus he was just insane anyway so Do not answer. evil I swear to God I will shove this wheelchair right up your ass Mason hey Woods you look like a hammered shit you stay right there Mason, I shot you in the leg. Turns out you're a lousy shot. My ass. <laughs> this is exactly years. why. This is why I shot him in the leg instead of going for the headshot. This video is triggered to play upon my assassination. For this kid, you know how to proceed. My death. Will shine light upon ubiquitous darkness. David Mason for Sergeant Woods. Another Mason? Oh, fuck. Secure the building. And we just cut into hey, credits? Kid. Oh, no. Whatever. They're just putting these credits in between shots. Hey, this is Dave. Dave. How you doing? <laughs> this is your dad. <laughs> That's such a weird way to let him know. Dad. See? Although it's weird that I had to shoot him twice in the leg. Like they wouldn't accept that he wasn't dead. What the fuck? Oh, you got a couple of fucking broads. Work this shit out on your own. Need some smokes. There's bastard. <laughs> Where's my smoke? <laughs> Man, Woods is such a good character. I knew who was going to say that. I just knew it. Oh, look. That's that's the end? All right. 
Well, there's the end of Black Ops 2. So, that's one of the eight endings there are. There's a lot of different decisions you can make throughout the game where it'll influ influence that. The first session that I played this, uh, it didn't... I didn't really know about that. I kind of forgot that there were multiple endings in this game, so I don't know if, what kind of decisions I made in that first session, but after that, I looked up like how many w missions there were, and then I saw there was like different endings. I'm like, oh, I should probably look into that. And so because of that, I knew I had to save Chloe so that she could, uh, you know, help stop the... Uh, attack even though eh, it didn't really work but she did something I don't, I don't know I don't know exactly how it played out with uh, Chloe but she did have a uh, a role in trying to fight off against or fight against the uh, cyber attack because she's like a hacker type character so I knew I had to save her and I knew that I I had to mess up my shot on the person who was captured when we were playing as woods because I knew that was Mason. So instead of going for the headshot like most people would do, I shot him in the leg. And because of that, Mason is able to survive and appear at the end of the game here. So those were like the two main things that I knew I wanted to do. I also knew I wanted to kill Menendez because because I didn't do the Strike Force missions, I believe if you leave Menendez alive, he... Uh, you know, bad things will happen. I mean, this is already pretty bad because everybody's rioting. It's like, oh, you killed Menendez. The U.S. is evil. But I'm pretty sure if we leave Menendez alive, he, he will visit Woods and end up killing him, I think. I don't really remember. I think that's one of the endings where he ends up killing Woods. And I definitely didn't want Woods to die, so it's better just to kill Menendez. But there's just so many decisions throughout this game, and they all impact the end of the game in a certain way, and how the story progresses, too. I also knew that I wanted to capture Chloe, or, you know, save Chloe from uh, DeFalco or whatever his name is. Um, because if we don't, then there's a Strike Force mission that we have to do in order to save her. And I do not like the Strike Force missions at all, so I made sure that I would be able to save her. So I'm happy about that. Then the other decision was probably Harper. You could probably not kill him, or you could try to kill Menendez. You could kill Menendez. But I'm pretty sure when I first played this game, like whatever it was, seven, eight years ago, I tried to kill Menendez, and he just stops you from killing him. He, he just grabs your gun and then probably ends up killing Fadir. And. Maybe he captures Harper, maybe he just kills Harper anyway. I don't know. Friendly, you I don't really remember. That. But I imagine that Harper was just gonna die anyway, so I just killed him as Fadir so that we could keep our cover. And luckily, Fadir, because he survived and he was on the Obama, um, he was able to jump in front of the bullet that would have killed Chloe. So it's a good thing that we saved him, I think. But, you know, it's just a lot of... Uh, a lot of decisions to make in this game, and it's kind of cool for a Call of Duty game to have, like, multiple paths you can take and different endings and all that. It's pretty cool, but I don't know. Overall, I have mixed feelings about this game. Like, they tried to be really innovative with it, which is very good. You know, it gets kind of boring just playing through Call of Duty games where you're just in a squad, you push up, and that's it. You know, fighting, getting into gunfights and all that stuff. You know, that can get kind of old after a while. But in this game, they they tried to do that a little bit differently. You know, it wasn't just constantly run and gun type stuff. Um, there was a lot of different types of missions. You know, we had to like eavesdrop a Menendez at one point. Uh, there was parts where you had to be stealthy. And then you got your classic Call of Duty gameplay, and then you have vehicle gameplay. And then they tried to introduce the Strike Force missions, which I I am not a fan of. I just don't like them at all. I'm not a big fan of RTS. I just don't have the patience to learn, and uh, it's just not that fun to me. So, unfortunately, I didn't do any of them, and I tried. I tried to get at least one done, but it, it just wasn't happening, so, yeah. And it's it's really annoying that those Strike Force missions actually have an impact on the story. Because if you do those, you get more allies, and then the end of the game is a little bit different, because um, Menendez can't get, like, or, you know, 
the other countries that you help will actually come in to support you and you can save the USS Obama and all that stuff. But unfortunately, I didn't do any of that, so yeah. So, you know, the Strike Force missions I think would have been cool as a like side content type thing instead of tying it into the story. Kind of like what they did with Spec Ops with Modern Warfare 2. Uh, in Modern Warfare 2, they added Spec Ops, and that was just like extra missions that you can do after you complete the campaign and stuff. So, you know, that's cool, but it didn't have any impact on the campaign, so you don't actually have to do those. The Strike Force missions were technically optional, but if you don't do them, they still impact the campaign, and that really sucks. I wish they would have had like a separate thing like they did with Spec Ops, because I would have just liked to go through this campaign, make the decisions throughout the campaign, and then that's it. But no, they wanted you to play the Strike Force missions so that you could get the best ending possible, and I just, I don't have the patience for that. Like I said, not a big fan of RTS, so that part of the game really just leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Uh, I just did not like that, and because of that, I don't like the game as much as I would if they didn't have Strike Force missions be tied into the story. But you know, the gameplay felt great. This game came out in 2012, which was like pretty much eight years ago, almost eight years ago, because I think it came out in November, and we're currently in September 2020. But you know, it came out eight years ago, and it still feels pretty good, and I think it feels better than some of the FPS games that are out there currently, and it's an eight-year-old game. But you know, it's just the actual gunfights and stuff is pretty fun. I did get a little bit upset at some points just because I don't like dying over and over and over again. But, you know, I was also not having a very good day, so, you know, that, that does influence how I play and how I, like, react to bad things happening in-game. So, I apologize for for the little bit of rage I had, but, yeah, overall, I, I, I do enjoy the gunfights. I, I do enjoy the way the guns are in this game. They, they feel great. They definitely have less recoil than Black Ops 1, which was very strange, but <laughs> whatever. And I'm glad they had hit markers, like, that was such a good addition to the game. Because uh, usually in Call of Duty campaigns, they don't have hit markers, and you kind of have to uh, just hope you hit them. And listen for headshot sounds, and just make sure that the enemies drop dead and all that stuff. But this game, they actually had hit markers, and that's a really nice addition. And then just using all the weapons that we used in multiplayer and stuff back in the day. Like, every single weapon in multiplayer was so good, and then in the campaign, they were good too. But yeah, you know, I, I love the weapons in this game. They, they were just... They're all good. In multiplayer, they were all just usable. Like, there was really nothing that was, like, super overpowered. And there were a couple, like, uh, I remember the fully auto FAL was kind of a problem at one point. The Remington, the shotgun, was a pretty big problem, especially on PC at one point. Um, it may have gotten nerfed, I'm not really sure, but other than that, most of the weapons were just usable and felt really good. Like, this is the only game where I got gold camo on every single weapon, which means I got diamond camo on everything. Unfortunately, they didn't have dark matter back then, but if they did, I would have gotten it because I got camo on everything. Like, all the assault rifles, SMGs, shotguns, pistols, launchers, I'm pretty sure I got everything diamond. So, yeah. I miss Black Ops 2. I think it was probably the best made multiplayer for Call of Duty out of all of them. And unfortunately they haven't made a very good Call of Duty since then, so. I, I still am not really sure which one I like more, Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2. I definitely had a lot of fun with Black Ops 1, but I feel like because Black Ops 2 is so much more balanced and fair, I think Black Ops 2 is the better multiplayer experience. Um, unfortunately, there's no more multiplayer available because on consoles it's pretty much filled with hackers on pc there's probably nobody playing and there's probably hackers as well so unfortunately i can't uh, play anymore and that makes me sad but uh, oh well but yeah the weapons in this game were just really really fun to use like all of them were fun to use and uh and then i really like that they had the like throwback missions to the cold war era you know like in the 80s and they kind of took the regular weapons from like the future and stuff, the ones that you actually use in multiplayer, and they just put them in the old ones, or in the old, uh, you know, the throwback missions. But they just reskinned them. They still sounded the same, they still felt the same, but they were just reskinned. Which is pretty funny. 
but you know I really liked it though it was so cool and I also just I just like the way the guns felt they were they were really good but yeah overall the story was it was alright you know it was pretty cliche you know this villain has a tragic backstory um, and then he wants to make other people suffer just like he did and you know you go through that and that's pretty much the game so you know not the most unique story but it was an it was an interesting story I don't think it was an, as interesting as Black Ops 1 but it was still pretty good Black Ops 1 and 2 are definitely pretty good campaigns uh, and hopefully Cold War will be just as good if not better and I think they're bringing back woods but I'm not really sure about that but we will see it is supposed to take place in the 80s, so there's a good chance that Woods will be there. And maybe we'll get to see Mason again? I don't know. I really like the Black Ops series, so this was this was fun to go through again. Like I said, it's been a while since I've played e either Black Ops 1 or 2. Black Ops 1 has probably been like 10 years. Black Ops 2 has probably been like 8 years. But it's weird, because going through these campaigns, it's been like... Oh, I remember this! And it's that feeling of like, didn't I just play this last year? Didn't I watch somebody play this like last year or a couple years ago or something? But man, I don't know. It feels like I just played it and uh, I don't know. Like going through the game, it just felt like I had done all this stuff super recently, but I haven't. <laughs> this is one of those feelings. But yeah, I enjoyed going through this for the most part. I wish I would have done better with just uh, gameplay and not raging. That would have been nice, but... You know, it was nice to go through these again. I I liked it. So, I would recommend playing Black Ops 1 and 2 uh, if you can. Unfortunately, games really don't go on sale that often. And you only get, what, like six hours out of each campaign? Now, each game, I believe, has zombies, so that's more replay value. And Black Ops 2, you can also replay this game multiple times. You can figure out how to do the Strike Force stuff. Um, you know, there's eight different endings, so there's definitely replay value there. So, there's a pretty good amount of replay value for Black Ops 2, even though multiplayer is pretty much dead at this point. Same thing for Black Ops 1. But I think I like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 1's campaign a little bit more, just because it felt more unique in a way. Like, it was confusing and stuff, but it was also very interesting, and I just like that era. You know, the Cold War, Vietnam era type stuff. This one is more about the future with a few throwback missions, which is, you know, cool and everything, but eh. And it's weird because this game came out around the time that drones were getting more popular, and you see all this stuff happening in the game, and it's like, eh, that's not gonna happen for a while. And then here we are in 2020, and it's very, very similar to things that are going on currently, and that's so weird. It feels like a lot of games are like that. A lot of games that came out in like 2012, 2013, you know, same thing with The Last of Us. You, you go through these games and the story's like really crazy and everything. It's like, oh, that stuff's not going to happen for a while. And then 2020 comes around and it's like, hey, remember these games? Let's make it real. Shit. <laughs> oh, boy. 2020 is just not a very good year, but hopefully we can all get through it and hopefully we can all stay safe. So, yeah, overall, I like Black Ops 1 and 2. We're done with that uh, with those two games and pretty much the Black Ops series at this point so now we are ready to jump into Cold War and uh, yeah we'll be playing that when it comes out I hope and hopefully it'll be a fun experience so overall both campaigns were pretty good uh, I really enjoyed going through them again you know, it was nice nostalgia just reminiscing about two of my favorite multiplayer Call of Duties like honestly Black Ops 1 and 2 are just definitely my favorites and uh, I just had so much fun with them and I put so much time into the games and uh, you know at least I can still play the campaigns uh, that's that's nice but it would be so much nicer if I could just jump into multiplayer and play that more because honestly I would rather do that I would have rather been doing that for the past eight years than playing the, all the new Call of Duties <laughs> but oh well yeah hopefully Cold War will have that same Black Ops feeling where I just want to play constantly and I actually enjoy the multiplayer. But I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, that's going to be it for this Let's Play. That's going to be it for the Black Ops series. 
the next Call of Duty game we're going to be playing is most likely going to be Cold War because that comes out in like two months. So yeah, hopefully we'll be playing through that. And I'm looking forward to it, especially because we're going back to like the 80s era. So that's going to be more interesting than, you know, this futuristic type stuff. And like I said, Black Ops 3, we're not going to be playing just because I don't think it has any connection to these two games. And I just really didn't enjoy the game anyway, so I don't really feel like playing it. And I'd have to play it on console, which is also a big problem because I'm not very good at, at FPS on console anymore. And there's also jetpack advanced movement type stuff, which is very hard to do on a controller. And I'm definitely not going to buy it on PC because when it goes on sale, it's only like 40 bucks, uh, which is still pretty expensive. So, you know, it drops from like 60 to 40. And that, that's just too much money for me to spend on a game that I'm not really going to enjoy. So we're going to skip on Black Ops 3. And Black Ops 4 doesn't have a campaign, so that doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's that's it for the Black Ops series. If you enjoyed, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more. We'll be playing Cold War when it comes out. And uh, let me know what you thought of the game in the comments below. I really enjoyed it, so hopefully you did too. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be it for uh, this Let's Play. So again, overall story was all right the guns felt great it's just nice to play the black ops series again i really enjoyed it so yeah that's gonna be it so thank you for watching hopefully you all enjoyed and uh hopefully i will talk to you all later